This morning, we now know the fate of a man who was convicted in a high-profile murder of a five-year-old Beloit boy. And saluting our heroes, we have a preview of the Veterans Day events happening this weekend honoring some of our nation's bravest men and women. This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good Saturday morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning, Saturday. It is 8 a.m. on this November 10th. I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese, who's still on that high from all of that snowfall we saw yesterday morning. Yeah, in fact, I'm ready to put up the Christmas stuff after I am that. too. It's that time of the year. You see some snow and then you're just ready. Of course, a lot of the snow from yesterday melted here in points west. Points east and closer to Milwaukee, you do still have snow on the ground. Temperature-wise, though, things are colder. Well, that's an error. Ultimately, Things are about 10 to 15 degrees colder than they Burr. were at this time yesterday. I don't know if Janesville just burst into flames <laughs> a couple moments ago or what, but the graphic is certainly, uh, yeah, it's not 45 in Janesville. Don't know what they're going. Yikes. They have the warmth. I don't know. Go to them, figure out how to stay warm. Otherwise, temperatures are in the teens for a lot of folks uh, this morning. Some of us in the lower teens and a lot of us coming out of being close to the single digits. Wind chills, however, are a different story. The winds are calm now, but they at one point were coming out of the northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And so because of that, you have wind chills that are in the single digits right now. Again, Janesville, not sure what's going on with their uh, airport reporting 45 degrees and a wind chill of 39, but I'm sure most of us would wish that was the case right now. On the bright side, hint, hint, it is sunny out there and we will see a lot more sunshine going through the morning and early afternoon before cloud cover works its way on in. And once that cloud cover works its way on in, it'll bring a chance for flurries later on tonight, but otherwise 18 to 26 through the morning. By the afternoon, temperatures will top out right around 30 with the cloud cover moving on in. And of course, a lot of folks are headed out to the last outdoor farmer's market. Here's how traffic is looking. It's great. Bundle up. Take a moment to get outdoors. I don't think many folks will regret it because it's warm compared to the air coming in Tuesday. Have you seen the new cold faced emoji? It's like blue in the face with the icicles coming down. I have not. I have not. That seems like one you'll probably use once we stick you back outside. Just updated the phone. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm feeling that a lot. All so. right. Well, I need to update mine, but I'm sure we'll use it this winter. All right, Chris, we'll see you in just a little bit. Sounds good. New overnight, Madison police are searching for a man who threatened a woman and hit her before getting away with her purse. It happened just after 9 last night outside the Journey Seafood and Sushi restaurant on Lean Road. Officers say the woman was walking to her car in the restaurant's parking lot. That's when a tall, skinny white man in his 30s wearing a black sweatshirt with the hood up fought her for her purse. The 40-year-old woman was not seriously injured. Anyone with information is asked to call Madison Police. The man responsible for killing a five-year-old Beloit boy in a drive-by shooting will spend the next 40 years in prison, followed by 20 years in extended supervision. A judge gave Sergio Ortiz that maximum sentence yesterday following emotional testimony from family and friends of Austin Ramos Jr., the boy killed in the shooting. The assistant attorney general also took the stand, describing the gruesome events of the shooting. He was not pronounced dead until 10.03 p.m., five-year-old child suffered for three hours, fought for his life. There are more sentencings expected in this case for the other men who were in a car with Ortiz at the time of the shooting. UW-Madison has terminated its Kappa Sigma fraternity chapter after a near fatal incident this summer. The university said the chapter violated the student organization code of conduct when people pushed a television off the chapter's balcony, nearly hitting a woman. That was back in June, you'll remember. The chapter may not attempt to re-register for five years, but it can appeal that decision. Veterans Day is tomorrow, and people here in Wisconsin and across the country are taking time to honor those who served. At the nation's capital this weekend, there are special events to honor the almost 5 million American soldiers who served in World War I. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the armistice with Germany. Tomorrow morning, there's a service to honor soldiers at the National Cathedral, a nationwide bells of peace tolling, and a military and veteran salute at Pershing Park. That's about a block away from the White House. That's the site where a World War I memorial called A Soldier's Journey will be constructed. There's currently not any World War Memorial in Washington, D.C. After three years of hard work and determination, a World War I memorial will be dedicated in Sauk County today. 
Over the Memorial Day weekend, we first introduced you to artist Homer Dan. He sculpted the memorial out of clay, honoring 200 soldiers who died on a ship heading to Europe that was sunk by a German torpedo. That clay sculpture was just bronzed at a foundry in Illinois and will be dedicated today at Lower Oshner Park in Baraboo. That dedication ceremony starts at 10. There's another event honoring World War I soldiers this weekend here in Madison. The state capitol's Veterans Day program will honor the Centennial Armistice. That features the VFW 1318 Volunteer Band and the Sons of the American Revolution Honor Guard presenting the nation's flag. Badger Honor Flight veterans and volunteers who serve them will be there as well. That's in the Capitol Rotunda at 9.30 tomorrow. The Wisconsin Veterans Museum is offering guided tours of its featured exhibit all weekend long. It's called Beyond the Trenches, Stories from the Front. It looks at the 122,000 Wisconsin men and women who served on land, sea, and in the air during World War I. Tickets are free, but you are asked to register online. The central branch of the Madison Library downtown is hosting a special real-life library event so visitors can hear from veterans firsthand. The idea is these veterans will act like books that people can walk up to and read to understand what it means to serve in the military. That starts at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Some beauty school students in Janesville are hoping to thank veterans for their service in their own way. Tricochi University is holding its annual Haircuts for Heroes. Men and women who served or are actively serving can get a free haircut at the Janesville campus just by showing their military ID. Veterans can stop by the campus between 9 and 5 today. There's also a Help a Vet fundraiser happening this weekend in Windsor. Roadside Grill is raising money for a number of organizations that support veterans. Those include Badger Honor Flight, Home Health United, and shelters that host free Thanksgiving meals. 10% of all food sales tomorrow will go to those programs. Packers kicker Chris Jackie will be at the restaurant tomorrow afternoon signing autographs for the cause as well. Seven minutes past eight o'clock and we're just a few hours away from another Badger kickoff this week on the road against the Nittany Lions. Our Kevin Lewis has three things to watch during the game. The first thing you should watch is the guy who's expected to make his second career start at quarterback, Jack Cohn. Alex Hornibrooks in concussion protocol after suffering his second head injury in as many weeks. Cohn's been okay, but that might not be good enough against a team that's coming off an embarrassing loss and can end the Badgers' slim Big Ten West hopes with a win. Cohn, 25 of 38 this season, two touchdowns, no picks. But handing to number 23 is never a bad thing. Jonathan Taylor's averaging more than 151 yards per game. The Badgers defense looking like the walking wounded. Nose tackle Olive Sagapolu out for the rest of the season after having right arm surgery this week. Safety Scott Nelson and cornerback Deron Harrell both listed as questionable. The Badgers fifth in total defense in the Big Ten. Penn State's fifth in total offense. Home sweet home. Hmm. Happy Valley hasn't been that hilarious for the Nittany Lions. They're three and two at home, just one and two in Beaver Stadium conference games. The Badgers have lost three straight to Penn State overall. They haven't been to Happy Valley since 2012. The last time they won there, 2003. The Badgers six and three overall, four and two in the Big Ten. Penn State six and three, three and three in the league. Kickoffs at 11 o'clock. Wisconsin needs to win and get some help to keep their faint Western Division hopes alive. Enjoy the game, everybody. The Packers are back at Lambeau tomorrow, taking on the Dolphins. The Florida boys are going to have to deal with temperatures expected to dip down into the 20s tomorrow afternoon. Another reason things are looking pretty favorable for the pack, starting Dolphins quarterback Ryan Tannehill will miss his fifth consecutive game for a shoulder injury. Brock Osweiler, who is taking his place, hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in almost nine quarters. Meanwhile, Aaron Rodgers was complimentary of Marquez Valdez-Scantling this week. The rookie wide receiver led the team in yardage last week, three catches for 101 yards, and Rodgers wants to see more of that. We gotta have a little more urgency, I think, uh, getting in and out of the huddle uh, and getting the line of scrimmage and calling plays uh, on quicker cadences to start to uh, get them to show what they're doing. And uh, you know, at times we just with moving pieces and substitutions, we haven't uh, maybe had the uh, the fast-paced tempo uh, up to as fast as we'd like it to be. Kickoff is set for 3:30 tomorrow afternoon. You can catch the game right here on WISC TV3. 
The team is planning a big party to welcome another great into the Packers Hall of Fame. Former executive vice president and general manager Ted Thompson will have his legacy preserved as part of Packers history during the 49th Annual Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thompson said he had a hard time believing it was true after thinking about all of the great players that have come through the program. He says they are idols and he says, just quote, he's just a scout. Thompson's accomplishments include nine playoff seasons, a Super Bowl win in 2011, and drafting Aaron Rodgers, which the Hall of Fame president calls, quote, obviously one of the most important draft picks in Packers history. The induction ceremony is happening a little later, a little earlier this year in May rather than July. We have a heads up to drivers heading anywhere downtown this weekend. The Madison Marathon is happening tomorrow morning. Starting at 7 a.m., participants will be going from the Capitol through the UW Arboretum, UW Campus, Warner Park, and back to the Capitol. The final runners are expected to cross the finish line at 1.30 in the afternoon. During that time, drivers should expect a number of detours and delays. Madison police will be at some of the major intersections directing traffic throughout the day. And for anyone driving on the far west side near Verona, part of Highway P or County Highway PD is now closed as part of the Highway M reconstruction project. That stretch of PD west of Highway M will be closed until 6 a.m. Monday. Then the closure will shift to the east side of the highway, lasting through 6 o'clock Friday morning. It is 11 minutes past 8 o'clock right now. We got our first winter taste this week, but will that cold snap continue? Here's a live look over the Capitol this Saturday morning. Yes, the sun is shining, but it's still cold out there. Chris is in next with the full weekend forecast. And there are several shows and movies for you to enjoy if you want to stay inside this weekend. Will has your three things to watch coming up on News 3 This Morning, Saturday.
A good Saturday morning. You'll be thankful that the sun is out. Temperatures, on the other hand, are a lot colder as opposed to yesterday by about 10 degrees for a lot of folks across the upper Midwest. We are seeing temperatures in the teens for a lot of us. 18 degrees right now in Madison. 10 in Eau Claire right now. The wind is kind of making things feel a little bit cooler. Thankfully, though, they have begun to relax from about Madison and points west. The closer you are towards the lakeshore, the stronger a lot of that wind will be. Here are those wind speeds right now showing you exactly what I mean. Closer to 20, hour, 20 miles per hour is the wind speed on the east side of the state, but much more relaxed on the western half of the state. Still, though, wind chills are in the single digits if you get caught in a breeze, but that will get better as we do go through the day one right now. That's the wind chill in Waukesha and some areas had wind chills below zero earlier. But as I mentioned, things have gotten to get better and they will continue to get better as we go throughout the morning. We'll see those wind chills near about 20 as we head towards lunchtime, eventually topping out in the upper 20s or lower 20s rather throughout the day. But even into the overnight hours tonight into your Sunday, even still wind chills will only get into the teens as opposed to the single digits and close to zero like we saw tonight. Let's take you hour by hour temperature wise. We should reach the mid 20s by lunchtime, topping out around 30 degrees for highs this afternoon. Clouds will increase though tonight ahead of this next chance for snow showers and flurries that will work its way into the picture. But for the most part, that will not amount to much, although the ground is frozen now, so anything that falls will stick. But again, we're talking a dusting at best throughout your Sunday. A mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures will be warmer though in the 30s. That's because this push of cold air will relax for a little bit before a stronger push of cold air works in its way on Tuesday. Once we get beyond that, though, things do ultimately begin to relax the jet stream will split and the polar jet stream will work its way farther to the north, keeping that cooler air locked up at least temporarily. So temperatures below average for now, but they'll become closer to average as we go through the end of the next seven to 10 days. For the most part, other than the snow chance that we have later on tonight, though, we do appear to be dry in our forecast. Plenty of sunshine through today before the cloud cover moves in. And then once we get you through early next week, there's a lot of sunshine on the table there with temperatures potentially returning to the 40s. By the time we get you towards next weekend, Josh, that'll feel good. But in the meantime, we will be cold. 40s, what a heat wave. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's time to break out the swim trunks at that point after oh this cold snap we've been in. <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. In entertainment news this morning, Billboard has named pop sensation Ariana Grande its 2018 Woman of the Year. She'll receive the award at the Billboard Women in Music Gala next month. The magazine praised the 25-year-old for standing up for herself and her decisions. Grande has had a tough year, most recently going through a public breakup with NSL, N SNL star Pete Davidson. There we go. She just released her new single, Thank You Next, about female empowerment. A major milestone after 50 years in show business this week, Academy Award winner Michael Douglas got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He thanked his legendary father, who was at the ceremony, for his advice and inspiration, saying his proudest accomplishment is being his son. Kirk Douglas turns 102 years old next month. 818 is your time right now, and it's the coldest weekend here in Wisconsin since last spring, so what better excuse do you need to stay inside and check out some new entertainment? Will Loper has this week's three things to watch. I am called Brick. Nice to meet you, Brick. Uh, uh, where are you from? Wisconsin. New on home video this week is Incredibles 2. It's time to make some wrong things right. Follow Elastigirl as she fights bad guys while Dad Incredible stays home to watch the kids. Hello? Hey, honey. How are the kids? Everything's great. Wow. Is she having adolescence? And Jack Jack? <laughs> He's in excellent health. No! What the? Num num cooking. Oh, God! Cooking. Okay, that is freaky. The Incredibles 2 is available to rent or buy everywhere now. That's not the way you're supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. This I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. What about us taking an adventure east? Like Queens? Singapore. Colin's wedding. Don't you want to be my family? New on Digital HD this week is Crazy Rich Asians. Good money. Let's take a bite and get you checked into first class. Hey, 
can't afford this. So your family is rich? We're comfortable. That is exactly what a super rich person would say. The romantic comedy follows Rachel as she discovers her boyfriend's family may have a little more money than she first thought. Money. 1.2 million. That's what I want. The Nick you're dating is Nick Young? Yeah, you guys know them or something? Hells yeah. They're just the biggest developers in all of Singapore. That's what I want. Damn, Rachel. It's like the Asian bachelor. These people aren't just rich, they're crazy rich. Now you really should have told me that you're like the Prince William of Asia. That's ridiculous. Much more of a Harry. <laughs> Mom, this is Rachel Chu. She just thinks you're some like unrefined banana. No, no, no. Uh, those are a few fingers. Yellow on the outside, or white on the inside. Do some crazy. Crazy Rich Asians is available to rent or buy on all digital platforms now. Yo, it's about time someone stood up to Auntie Eleanor. Well, you, not me. Oh, God. She can't know I was ever here. You've known for 24 hours that an unregistered wizard set magical beasts loose in New York. Finally, prepare for next week's sequel, Crimes of Grindelwald, by watching the first Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Mr. Scamander, do you know anything about the wizarding community in America? We don't let things loose. Eddie Redmayne stars as a wizard who keeps all sorts of magical creatures inside his trunk. I don't think I'm dreaming. I gave it away. I ain't got the brains to make this up. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Time is running out. Let's just command it. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch. And this is Will Noper for News 3 This Morning, Saturday. 821 is your time. Still ahead this morning. Black Friday is less than two weeks away already, and retailers are getting ready for record setting sales. And you can get some holiday shopping done this weekend at the Art Fair Off the Square. The annual event is back at the Monona Terrace. We'll get you in the holiday spirit when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues.
Well, I just want to encourage everyone to wake up and maybe do a little dancing this morning, not because the weather's exciting, but just because it'll get your blood circulating and keep you warmer. Temperatures are in the teens and wind chills are in the single digits for a lot of us right now. Nine is the wind chill in Madison. One, the wind chill as you work your way over towards Waukesha. Janesville, you all can just have fun, we'll do your own thing. But 18 to 26 will be the temperature as we go through the morning. By the afternoon, we'll see those temperatures topping out right around 30 degrees. The thing is, clouds will be on the increase out of a chance for snow showers and flurries overnight. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. 825 this morning. The weather is not the only indicator. Winter is on its way. The annual winter art fair off the square is today and tomorrow. The 29th event is taking place inside the Monona Terrace. There are 135 different booths and artists showing off stuff. You can check out what's for sale starting at 9 this morning and then at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It costs five bucks a person to get in. With Thanksgiving less than two weeks away, holiday spending is projected to increase this year. The National Retail Federation says spending will likely increase by about four to five percent compared to last year. That'll be a grand total of more than $720 billion over the holiday season. The National Retail Federation president says that's due to a healthy economy and strong consumer confidence, despite some of the impacts of the ongoing trade war. Still to come, a preview of this morning's Badgers game against Penn State. Plus, the popular Kids of the Rotunda series is back at the Overture. And on our program, we're looking ahead to all of the family fun events happening this month. The news is back on News 3 this morning, Saturday. It's fun for the whole family. The Kids in the Rotunda series is back. At the Overture, we're looking ahead at what's showing there this month.
This is News 3 This Morning, Saturday. Good Saturday morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning, Saturday. It is 8.30 a.m. on this November 10th. I'm Josh Breider. Chris has a colder than average forecast in just a moment, but first here's what's happening right now. Madison police are searching this morning for a man who threatened a woman and hit her before getting away with her purse. It happened just after 9 last night outside the Journey Seafood and Sushi restaurant on Lean Road. Officers say the woman was walking to her car in the restaurant's parking lot. That's when a tall, skinny white man in his 30s wearing a black sweatshirt fought her for her purse. The 40-year-old woman was not seriously injured. Anyone with information is asked to call Madison police. In honor of Veterans Day weekend, the Wisconsin Veterans Museum is offering guided tours of its featured exhibit. It's called Beyond the Trenches, Stories from the Front. It looks at the 122,000 Wisconsin men and women who served on land, sea, and in the air during World War I. Tickets are free, but you are asked to register online. The central branch of the Madison Library downtown is hosting a special real-life library event so visitors can hear from veterans firsthand. The idea is these veterans will act like books that people can walk up to and read to understand what it means to serve in the military. That starts at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Now over to the Badgers who face Penn State later this morning. Backup Jack Cohn is expected to start as Alex Hornibrook is still questionable due to a head injury. The sophomore struggled a bit in the loss against Northwestern a couple of weeks ago, but did okay coming in to relieve Hornibrook against Rutgers last week. Kickoff is set for 11 this morning on the road against the Nittany Lions, who are 3-3 three three in the conference so far this season. First alert traffic note for those in downtown. The Madison Marathon is tomorrow and starting at 7 in the morning. Runners will be going from the Capitol through the UW Arboretum, UW Campus, Warner Park, and back to the Capitol. The final races are, racers are expected to cross the finish line at around 1.30 in the afternoon. During that time, drivers should expect a number of detours and delays. Madison police will be at some of the major intersections directing traffic throughout the day. Boy, Chris, I hope those runners are prepared for the cold. It is a chilly one out there this weekend. Oh, yes. Long johns definitely will be needed. Temperatures right at 18 degrees right now. Winds are calm, though, but once you get the breeze to blow, the wind chill becomes a different story. Right now, you have winds across the area pretty much from about 10 to 20 miles per hour on the eastern half of the state. The winds are much more relaxed on the western half of the state. We'll see that continue to push its way eastward throughout the day. But where the breeze is in Madison, the wind chill 9 degrees right now, 6 in Watertown, 7 for our folks up in Juneau. Fond du Lac, one of those colder, colder spots with wind chills at 4 degrees. But here's the overall picture right now across the upper Midwest. We do have some cloud cover across the northern half of the state. Clear skies for us right now. But cloud cover streaming in from the west along with snow entering parts of western Minnesota. That is a system that will be zipping to through our area overnight tonight and that will at least bring a chance for some snow showers and flurries and that will be very quickly working its way on through here. So once we head into the overnight hours, all of us do have a chance for flurries. We'll notice those lows that are in the 20s across the eastern sections along with the western sections. Now as you work your way up towards the north, that's where you'll have a better chance at seeing some snow showers and flurries, but we'll still see temperatures in the 20s. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. 833 is your time. The Salvation Army's Red Kettle campaign is officially underway. They kicked off the season yesterday at Metro Market on Cottage Grove Road. The Salvation Army set a goal of $525,000 this season. They're still looking for bell ringers, though, at their 71 locations across the county. About 75% of the shifts still need to be filled in order for them to reach their goal. The campaign runs until December 24th. The Dane County Farmers Market's outdoor season officially wraps up today. Market manager Sarah Elliott says vendor attendance hit its mark this year. An average of 150 vendors lined the square during the summer months. But today she is expecting lower turnout with lower temps. One week from today, November 17th, the market moves indoors to the Monona Terrace for the start of the holiday market season. Tyrol Basin is opening for its season today. On its Facebook page, Tyrol says it will open be open from noon to 5 today and from 9 to 5 tomorrow. General Manager Nathan McGree says they have been in the process of making snow for the last two days, pumping out about 600 gallons of water through their machines every minute. Kids in the Rotunda is back at the Overture this fall, offering free performances geared towards young kids and families on most Saturdays through April. Mary Rose from the Overture joins us this morning to talk more about 
what is happening over there this month. Thank you so much for coming in once again. Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me back. So last month was the first month. We had you in here uh, last month. How'd the first one go? It was amazing. We had a lot of really wonderful shows, um, including a new performer, Angela Puerta, who did a really wonderful interactive performance uh, teaching children Spanish language and all about Colombian culture and music. So that was, uh, for me, the highlight of the month was bringing in a new performer like her. So. That's awesome. You guys have a lot to look forward to now in November. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about what you guys have going on. Yes, so today we are welcoming Chicago-based rock musicians' future hits to the Rotunda. They're going to be uh, entertaining audiences with an interactive performance that's secretly educational. They're going to be teaching some songs in Spanish as well. And uh, we also have family yoga today between performances offered by Little Ohm Big Ohm. And then we will not be having Kids in the Rotunda on November 17th because the Momoka Art and Gift Fair will be taking over the building that day. But we will return on November 23rd, the day after Thanksgiving, with special Friday shows. Mm. And that's going to be with uh, Chicago blues musicians, the Cashbox Kings. So that's always a very popular show. And that show is sponsored by the Madison Central Business Improvement District. It's a partnership with them as part of the downtown Madison Holiday Open House that they will be having. And then the next day on November 24th, we're welcoming local improv comedy troupe Monkey Business Institute. So it's gonna be a laughing good time with a lot of jokes and a lot of fun. And there's also a UW-Madison football game that day. So we're encouraging everybody to dress in red or in their Badger gear. And if they do, they'll be entered to win tickets to an upcoming UW-Madison sporting event. That's awesome. So what is kind of the importance, uh, you know, trying to get all of the kids together? What do you guys really trying to focus on? Yeah, so um, Kids in the Rotunda is really about creating a kids-centered environment where they can learn about uh, the arts, different cultures, meet new friends, and also it's really important for us to offer family bonding time in an art-centered environment where we're encouraging families to talk about their kids about the importance of art and the importance of learning from about other cultures, um, and also just creating a fun space where you can see you know, the importance of art as, as building creativity, so, yeah. So you've got many months ahead. If people are interested in uh, getting involved, what do they need to, to do to do so? Yeah, so I would recommend the very first thing that anybody should do is follow us on the Overtures Kids in the Rotunda Facebook page for seating updates and information about upcoming shows. And then also check out our website, overture.org slash KIR, and that's where you can see our full event listing for the rest of the season. Awesome. You can see it up there on your screen and a lot of stuff going on there. So we appreciate you uh, coming in and previewing all that. Yeah, thank you so much for having me again. Awesome. You have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. Still to come here this morning, we have a lot more to come. We've got Chris up with a forecast, and it's going to be another chilly one. But first, we've also got the Weekend 608 coming up. We've got what you can do with your family. That's when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues.
Temperatures are in the teens this morning for a lot of folks. 18 right now in Madison. The good news is winds are beginning to die down because that's creating a wind chill for a lot of us. One is what it feels like in Waukesha right now. The closer you get towards that lake shore, the colder it feels just because that's the strongest area of wind right now. 18 to 26 as we go throughout the morning. We'll see those highs top out right around 30 degrees. We do have another chance of snow showers and flurries. I'll be breaking down when we could see that coming up in your main forecast. Janesville looks like it had a little too much fun last night. Janesville, I'm not sure what's going on with that uh, ASOS reporting site there, but yep, it's partying on. All right, what is the weekend in the 608? And here's a look at what's going on in and around the Madison area. The Bartell Theater will bring us the show Infamous Mothers tonight at 730. The show was first a book, but by a Madison writer and motivational speaker and has been adapted for the stage. The production tells the remarkable stories of six real and four fictionalized women of color who overcame tremendous Tremendously difficult circumstances. Musicians ages 8 to 18 years old are coming together for three concerts today at the Mills Concert Hall, showcasing the talented ensembles of the Wisconsin Youth Symphony Orchestra, the Harp Ensemble and Concert Orchestra play at 1.30 p.m. The Percussion Ensemble and Philharmonia Orchestra take the stage at 4 p.m. And if you can't make those shows, the full Wisconsin Youth Symphony Orchestra will play on November 16th and 18th at the Middleton Performing Arts Center. A special new program will commemorate a special day. Tomorrow is the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The Madison band, The Kissers, will commemorate the anniversary with new music inspired by the war to end war. This rock and roll history show with a giant video wall displaying photos, film, and newspaper headlines will explore the conflict and its effect it had on Wisconsinites then and now. You can catch them at the Barrymore tomorrow night at 7. We'll also have the band on our show tomorrow morning for a special Veterans Day performance. It's around 745 Sunday. There are two events for local art lovers today only. You can check out the UW's Master of Fine Arts students as they show off their many talents at their annual Open Studio Day. Artists there will talk about their pieces and workshops, and their art will be available for purchase as well. The event takes place in the Humanities Building and at the Art Loft Studios from noon until 6. And both today and tomorrow, the Winter Art Fair Off the Square is back at the Monona Terrace. More than 135 artists will show and sell their art at the 29th annual event. Sculptors, woodworkers, potters, jewelry makers, and more will be there too. Any kids 12 and under will have a special area where they can go to pick out artwork as well. And as always, you can pick up a copy of this month's Madison Magazine for all of the best in our Madison area. Probably a good thing a lot of those are inside with the weather oh, we've got yes. going on. And today's holiday-themed events pair perfectly with the colder temperatures and this week's first snow. But it's not great for the farmers out at the market this morning. We are looking live over the Capitol where people are getting ready for the final outdoor market of the season. I'll have your full forecast next on News 3 this morning, Saturday. But first, happy birthday to Brayden and all the other kids turning three today. Thanks for celebrating with us on News 3 this morning, Saturday.
Good morning. We are waking up to some sunshine out there. That's good news. Here is weather track across the state of Wisconsin. Most of the cloud covers across the northern half of the state. So down south where we are, we are seeing sunshine for now. Cloud cover thickening up across Minnesota and Iowa that will impact us later on today. In the meantime, because of those clear skies overnight, temperatures were allowed to fall. We're in the teens right now. 16 at Stevens Point, 17 in Wausau, 18 for us right now in Madison. The winds are calm though. That is the good news. Initially, we had winds coming out of the northwest at about 14 miles per hour. So wind chills we will begin to see respond uh, in terms of getting a little bit warmer here in a second. But those stronger winds are across the lake shore right now. That's where they are closer to 20 miles per hour. The closer you work your way over towards the Mississippi River Valley, the more and more we begin to see those winds relax. But right now, if you do get caught in a breeze, the wind chill is 9 degrees in Madison right now. Janesville finally coming back to reality. Their wind chill nine as well. We'll get the contouring back uh, here in a second. Camp Douglas has a wind chill of three, but as we go further through the morning, here's how things will ultimately begin to play out for us. Once we get towards lunchtime, those wind chills will likely only be in the 20s instead of the single digits and closer to zero. By the afternoon, we'll see those wind chills again in the low 20s and even still overnight tonight at the coolest part of the day, we will only see or our coolest part of the night rather we will only see those wind chills in the upper teens and low 20s towards your Sunday morning. So it will feel a lot better even though it's still going to be cold sunshine through early this morning, but the cloud will be working its way back into the picture by the time we get you into the afternoon. We'll see temperatures top out right around 30 degrees. Then comes the possibility at least of some snow showers and flurries during the late night hours into early tomorrow. That will not last long. The ground is cold, so whatever falls may stick just a little bit, but even still, we're talking like a dusting or a sugar coating of some snow at that. Tomorrow, more sunshine, early clouds in the afternoon. Temperatures will top out into the 30s for those highs, but this cold air over us now retreats briefly before another shot of colder air moves in for Tuesday. That will be colder than the air that we have right now. Just I don't think we'll have a wave of snow associated with that one moving on through. We'll have another shot of some cooler air by next weekend, but ultimately we are talking a split flow in the jet streams. So that's where you have one jet stream across the south, another one up north. That tends to lock away some of that colder air. That means we'll see those temperatures beginning to rebound back to about where they should be for this time of the year. We just have to get through the next seven to 10 days. Still though, other than the chance for some snow tonight, we do ultimately trend to dry through the next week and some change. So that is good news. We're not looking at an active rainfall <laughs> pattern and Manny is happy about that. Look, Look at, at that him. smile. Absolutely. Three o'clock, 30 degrees. We are loving the threes. We love, it's our favorite number. I know, that is our favorite number. <laughs> How about that one? <laughs> well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this photo Jennifer sent us on Facebook. This is Lake Michigan at Two Rivers. I'm sure a very cold Lake Michigan this time of the year. Very cold, <laughs> very wavy. <laughs> very, very wavy, very mm -hmm. wavy. All right, thank you so much for sharing, Jennifer. What does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it to the Channel 3000 Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter. Use the hashtag MyNews3Morning, and that's how we're able to pick out our favorites and put them right here on the program. Stay with News 3 and Channel 3000 this weekend on our News at 6 and 10 tonight. There's a special vigil for the Wisconsin Girl Scouts who were hit and killed last weekend. We'll bring you there. But first, here at 8 o'clock, a dream come true for a diehard sports fan and a battle for his own life. How he's using his cancer battle to inspire others and make lasting memories when News 3 This Morning Saturday continues.
Welcome back at 854. There are your regular sports fans and then there are fans like Tyler, a diehard, fiercely determined fan who's faced plenty of obstacles in his own life. Tyler is currently battling cancer, but he's not letting that fight stop him from living out his dreams and inspiring others too. Here's a story. They average 42 three-point shots. I really like uh, the pace of play so far. A seat in the Pacers radio broadcast booth, just the latest place Tyler Trent's remarkable journey has taken him. There really aren't words to properly describe what it's been like. Um, it's just been super encouraging uh, just to see the outpouring of support. Sitting alongside Mark Boyle and Slick Leonard, a dream come true for the Carmel native. So we got a really young team this year. I played basketball in high school, and so, you know, just like every other Pretty much every other Indiana kid grew up idolizing Reggie Miller. You know, I'm right there with them in the same camp. And so, you know, being able to participate in this here this evening is, is huge. And uh, I'm just super thankful for the opportunity. Tyler admits his battle with bone cancer leaves him exhausted many days. But it's opportunities like this one that keep him fighting. I love to provide hope and inspiration where I can. And if that's what's going to provide hope and inspiration, you know, then that's what I'm willing to do. What it really does is give people a chance to learn who this young man is and appreciate his courage and his conviction and maybe be inspired to do something better with their own lives. Joining the broadcast of his hometown NBA franchise provided Tyler with yet another audience to hear his story and be driven by his mission of raising more funding for research. But he's not done. Tyler's dreams only continue to grow. Something that's way out there that I, I would never think that I'm deserving enough of would be uh, the Arthur Ashe Courage Award um, at the ESPYs. Uh, I would definitely love to have the opportunity to receive and, you know, inspire more people through that. It's just amazing how some of those people that have those hardships, how they can still turn around and make positive, you know, it just, yeah. You're right. Mountains can be moved. We're watching that happen. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and hit you guys with the forecast. We are seeing more sunshine this morning. Clouds will work their way back into the picture into the afternoon, though ahead of a chance for snow showers and flurries overnight tonight. The ground's frozen, yes, but even still, there's not much moisture, so I don't expect this to amount to anything more than maybe the lightest dusting you've ever seen. You know, but it should be pretty light snow picturesque. later on. Picturesque. Yes, go ahead and send pictures <laughs> in. 37 into your Sunday, and then Monday, 30 degrees. Tuesday, not getting out of the 20s. Oof. So, yeah, that's the next shot of colder air working its way on into the picture. But then things do get better. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. Got to be positive, right? That's right. We try our best. And we'll be positive, and we'll see you tomorrow morning when the news is back on News 3 this morning from 6.30 to 8. Making plans that are weather dependent? Get an accurate 12 hour, even a 10 day forecast. Download the Channel 3000 First Alert Weather app and start planning.